Hi there, this is Gist Nigeria. Coming up, breaking the bias. We look at how some women living with disabilities in Nigeria are rising above stereotypes. Also, an wounded passion fleeing Nigerian surgeon offers medical services at Polish border as Russia-Ukraine war lingers. Plus, exporting Africa. Afropop singer Davido reveals what's next for his career in an exclusive interview. And... Hello, my name is Rosalind Adewi. Check me out. The feminist empowering women across Africa. Great to have you here again on Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channels Television. And on the program, we look at the stories making the rounds online. I am Wiley Fakile. Let's start with our top story. She won't get married. She can't get an education. She is on feet and has no place in society. This and more are some of the popular biases against women living with disabilities in Nigeria. As we continue to mark this year's International Women's Month, uh, Just Nigeria's Aneta Felix meets up with free women raising the bar by rising above stereotypes. I believe if I was not a person with a disability, he wouldn't have treated me that way. And I wouldn't have settled for him. Never. Some people discriminate persons with disabilities ignorantly. And some discriminate because they just feel within their hearts that this person belongs to another group of human beings. When we talk about attitudinal barrier, it's about pity. It's about seeing the disability before the person. The World Health Organization estimates that over 1 billion people globally have some form of disability. 32 million of them live in Nigeria. Most of them are women. What's life like for persons living with disabilities? How do they navigate a prejudiced and inaccessible world? And how are they break in the bias regardless? To find out, I've come to meet Asomta Khalil, one of the 32 million persons living with disabilities in Nigeria. After a car accident 20 years ago, her hand was amputated, and so were her future hopes of a career in the media industry. Two buses collided and a lot of people died and I, I'm lucky to be a few of the people that survived the accident and that led to the amputation of my right hand. I didn't see any reason to move, to achieve or even follow my dreams. For me, it was a hand. For Asamta, finding love was a dream come true laced with nightmares of emotional abuse. It started with abusing me. I called me names that I'm an imbecile. I'm not a complete woman. I'm not fit to. He doesn't even know what he sees in me. And then, sexual and gender based violence. He started beating me. He beat me so, <laughs> so bad that I got used to him beating me. For me, it was a regular thing. He forcefully flung me to himself, like, drew me to himself. I was like, what are you doing? Leave me alone. I am not in the mood for anything. And he was like, what? Tore my nose. Literally stripped me naked. And, you know, suspended my legs. And today, there's nothing I'm going to do. And he raped me. 
Despite the abuse, her family considered her lucky to be married. My family was like, you have to just go there and die, just stay there. They have this mindset that marriage is meant to, it's where you stay, you should endure it. I was dying there. Asomta walked out of her abusive marriage barely two years in with two kids. Her survival and healing now powers her advocacy against sexual and gender-based violence of persons living with disabilities. I do tell our women, if I have the opportunities to share my story, do not let anybody, even your parents, pressurize you staying or being in a relationship that is abusive. You don't have to be in an abusive relationship. You don't have to be in an abusive marriage. According to a UNDP study, the global literacy rate is as low as 1% for women living with disabilities. The lack of inclusive education in Nigeria has come to mean a gloom future for many girls living with disabilities who are denied the right to education. Hanatsu Bachuri, a polio survivor, understands that pain. If you have disability and you happen to go to any institution, you're on your own. Nobody look for you. You, you, you take care of yourself. Resolute, she went on to escape the claws of illiteracy by whiskers. My older sister sponsored me from pre to diploma. But reaching to my HND, that's higher national diploma, I was the one that sponsored myself. I make photocopies of documents and sell in classes. And then after classes, I will plate my fellow um, classmates and then keep saving money and paying for my bills and school fees. Hanato bagged a degree in accounting at the Plateau State Polytechnic and the Nigerian College of Accountancy in Jos. But her education and skills did not eliminate the discrimination she was to face in the labor market. They said, I could have offered you a job, a very good job, but you cannot be able to go upstairs. It hurts him. She has now created a job for herself in the hair industry making beautiful wigs for a nationwide clientele. Lois Auta has been using a wheelchair for mobility since she was two years old. She moves around freely inside her home, where she has built ramps, but finds a different reality in public spaces. It has not been easy accessing workplaces, offices, churches, and parks and gardens, and other spaces independently. I have to be assisted. I feel so sad. I feel being excluded, sidelined, marginalized, stigmatized, and underrepresented. In January 2019, President Muhammadu Buhari signed into law an act that prohibits discrimination against persons with disabilities. The act also requires public services and infrastructure to have inclusive access for all. That law is three years old now, but Lois is yet to feel its impact. She's now taking the advocacy to stakeholders in architecture and engineering. When you're building a house, an office, a plaza, a school, you must have ramps. The accessibility challenge inspired Lois to establish Cedar Seed Foundation. It's a network of disabled women that promotes an inclusive world. Network of women with disabilities. Aspire to desire. Comfort Lamti is the UN Women Country Director. She applauds the Nigerian government for the legislation on the matter but advocates for its execution. I think we need to ensure that uh, beyond passage of the law, we also have an implementation plan in place, and most importantly, that we put budget uh, and resources behind implementing the law. The law is there, but you need to activate it. If you do not complain or you don't take anybody to court, 
what will government do? So I believe that people with disability who have been discriminated upon should take it up and then sue people for discriminating against them. While the reality of these issues are distressing, many like Asumta, Hanato and Lois are rising above stereotypes and blazing trails in the advocacy for other persons living with disabilities in Nigeria. Aneta, Felix, GIST, Nigeria. Of course, yes, we all have a place in society. Now, what are your thoughts about some of the biases against women living with disabilities in Nigeria? Do share with us on our Twitter handle at GIST Nigeria TV. We'd love to hear from you.